Hello and welcome to section 2 of chapter 8 on memory. Uh, today we're going to be looking at memory and the power of suggestion to look at why memory is actually flawed uh, and why sometimes it's not admissible. Uh, eyewitness testimony is not admissible at times and uh, all the things that kind of uh, affect our memories. Memories are reconstructive. Every time you remember something you're rebuilding in your mind. Uh, so they are susceptible to suggestions, to emotions, to circumstances, to things going on. Uh, and so people often, you know, psychologists wonder, should eyewitness testimony, you know, be adhered to? Should, should it be trusted? Uh, when they have lineups, uh, you know, like this from the usual suspect, uh, they're flawed because people are looking for justice or looking for someone uh, that looks like the person who perpetrated a crime or allegedly perpetrated a crime. So they'll pick out one that looks like the, the most similar to the, the one they thought committed the crime. Um, now, if it's Brooklyn Nine-Nine and they're singing, you know, Backstreet Boys, maybe that's a little different. I know that's pretty big on the internet right now. Uh, people identify the person who looks like the perpetrator. They just want someone to go to jail. And so it might not actually be the person who committed the crime or allegedly, because in our country you're guilty until proven innocent. Um, it is, it, it, it's not racist to say this, um, it is kind of, you know, it's a slippery slope, but um, other races or ethnicities all look alike uh, is a truth for many people that if they're not around that, uh, that group of people or a particular group of people, um, to them, they all look similar. They don't know, notice the little uh, subtle differences and, you know, eye shape and nose shapes and foreheads and, you know, you know slight variants in skin tone and things like that. And so somebody that has a crime allegedly committed to them by a, a different ethnicity, they have a hard time picking it out because, they, you know, they just not, they're not used to it until they all look the same. Um, here, to show you why eyewitness testimony is flawed, here's a very famous selective attention video. Uh, pay very close attention to this. This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. Basketball. I got 16. You count? 16? 17? The correct answer oh, I was one off. 15 passes. But did you see the gorilla? What? <laughs> this video is from the search by Daniel Simon and Christopher Chabrini and is copyrighted. Thank you, Dan, your assignments for that. Um, hopefully, uh, maybe you've seen that before, but most, not most, about half the people miss the gorilla. You're so focused on counting those passes and you're keeping your eyes on, you know, the people in white t-shirts that you just block out everything in black. And it kind of shows why eyewitness testimony can, can be flawed. That and the wording of questioning. Uh, Elizabeth Loftus did a lot of studies on memory. Um, she was one of the leading psychologists in terms of studying memory and measuring it and calculating it. And so she tested how eyewitness uh, testimony can be influenced by the questioning by simply changing one word. And this is a brilliant, uh, you know, experiment that she came up with. Um, they, 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 people watch two cars collide. Um, and, and so she asked them about how fast were the cars going when they hit each other after seeing the videos of the crash. And so they ask people, they say, if they, so it's very uh, controlled. The, the video is the same, it's the same car crash, um, same conditions, so everything. Uh, and the only thing, the only variable, the independent variable in these studies was the word they used for hit. Uh, and so that word influenced the estimates for how fast uh, the car was going. So the independent variable was the word to, used to describe a collision uh, and then the dependent variable was the speed. Uh, so they used hit, smashed, collided, bumped, and contacted. Smashed 
connotated that they were going very fast. The average guess was 40.8 miles per hour. Collided was 39.3. Bumped was 38.1. Hit was 34.0. And contact is a full 9 miles per hour slower uh, than if they used the word smashed. And so with that alone, it shows how the wording of a question could highly influence uh, people's um, testimony. Um, they'll ask sometimes, they did another study where they asked people, did you see a broken headlight? That leaves a possibility that maybe there was one, maybe there wasn't, I'm not sure. Versus, did you see the broken headlight? Which then you're like, well, yeah, I, I, I'm not dumb. I, I was paying attention. I wasn't texting my boyfriend. Um, they, they also did, there's a very funny, famous study uh, done in psychology where they had a phony Disneyland ad with Bugs Bunny. Uh, in it, which Warner Brothers and Disney don't mix because Disney hasn't bought it out yet, uh, made 16% of people, quote, remember seeing Bugs Bunny on their trip to Disneyland. And people are like, 16%. So one out of every six people that did this study because of a phony uh, advertisement believed that they saw Bugs Bunny at Disneyland. And this is why people can falsely remember things all the time. Uh, and so if we can't trust Adults' testimony, what about children? Um, during the 80s and 90s, child cases skyrocketed of abuse and uh, physical abuse and sexual abuse and things going on like that. Um, and what they found is chi children do re recollect accurately much of what they see, but they will say something happened when it did not, depending on the questioning. Uh, so if a police officer you know, calls them in there, they, did, did they hit you? Did they strike you? Did they smack you? Kids might say, yes, I, I was hit. Uh, because if they feel like they're in trouble or the words are put in their mouths. Uh, and so if something happened now, they question very carefully. They don't want to lead the children into in the testimony. If something did happen, they'll say, tell, tell me why we're talking today. Tell me the reason we're here together. And then if something did happen, the children will open up uh, to tell the truth. Instead of being led into, you know, trying to please the police officer or a principal or a parent or someone because of their line of questioning. And so it's very important uh, the influence that questioning and mood and emotion can have over our memories because we are reconstructing them in the past. That's all we have for today. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, let me know.